Summer hasn't even officially begun. It starts next week, but we're already feeling that heat. Since mid-May, 304 people in our area have been treated for a heat-related illness, according to the Houston Health Department. Joining me now, Dr. David Purse, to discuss all of that. So, Dr. Purse, how do heat-related illnesses turn into something that becomes a medical emergency? Yeah, great question, Haley. And I think that your viewers need to understand there's there's a couple of different heat related uh, illnesses. And one is really simple. It's a heat cramp. And that's pretty much what it sounds like. You get a muscle cramp generally in your leg. It hurts. You go inside, you cool off. What is next is heat exhaustion. And heat exhaustion really is when your body's just completely becoming overwhelmed by the heat and you feel exhausted. And when you're feeling this way, that is really a an alarm that your body is giving you, you need to go inside, you need to get out of the heat, you need to hydrate. And here's the thing, you're done for the day. You don't recover from yeah. heat exhaustion in just a couple of minutes, drink a bottle of water and you can go back out at it. No, you need to take it, uh, you know, take the day off. The last one is heat stroke. This is an immediate life-threatening emergency. Heat exhaustion can become heat stroke or heat stroke can just hit you all at once. And this is where your body gets so hot that your body's mechanisms to cool itself, predominantly sweating, shut off. And so one of the key differences is somebody who's got heat exhaustion will be awake, alert, they're, they're feeling lousy, they'll talk about it. Their skin will be wet because they're, they're sweating. Somebody with heat stroke, unfortunately, one of the first symptoms is confusion. They are unable to get themselves out of the heat because they're so confused. And if you come upon them, you'll notice their skin is hot and dry. They've stopped sweating. That is a call 911 situation. You cannot fix that at home. Their brain, their internal temperature is rising up to 106 or higher. And that is absolutely something we have to take care of in the emergency department. Uh, that is an absolute emergency. What do you do if you recognize those symptoms in somebody else or you come across somebody that is clearly in a heat emergency? Yeah, so this is where you, the, the first thing is, is, is to recognize that you know this is not a simple situation. Uh, tragically, we have these stories every year of people who try to help out a friend, family member, a coworker, and they think that if they just get them inside, they'll cool off. The real hallmark of, of heat stroke is is the hot, dry skin and confusion. I don't care what else they have, I don't care what else they're saying, if their skin is hot and dry and they're the least bit confused, get them out of the heat, call 911, try to get the, any excess clothing off of them. If they can swallow water, give them some water. But really, that is, you know, that's a time to act fast. And I don't care how much the person says, I'll be fine, they're not gonna be fine. You've gotta save their life. Yeah. Dr. Pars, you know, Amy and I were just talking too about, you know, kids going out to baseball camps and summer camps and spending all day outside. And we were talking about how you're only as hydrated today as the water you drank yesterday, the amount of water that you drank yesterday. How else do people avoid a heat related illness if they're not properly hydrated and whatnot? Yeah, you know, first of all, Kaylee, I want to capitalize on what you just said. This is another thing that most people don't understand. If I'm going to go out and do some gardening today and I know it's hot out, well, I'll just drink a, a bottle of water before I go out and I'll be fine. No, what you have to understand is that when you drink the water, you know, it goes into your stomach. And then actually, quite honestly, pretty quickly, it can get into your blood system. But what doesn't happen quickly is getting from your blood system into the cells, and that's where it needs to be. That's why you need to hydrate the night before. It takes hours for that hydration to get into the cells. And so what you just said is so very, very important. You, you're really only as hydrated as you were the night before. You can't hydrate that morning. Other things you can do is be smart, right? Don't go out, we know when it's, we know when it's gonna be super hot. Heck, you know, you just got the weather report. You know when the hottest part of the day is gonna be. If you need to be outside, do some work, do it earlier in the morning or do it later in the evening and do something else during the mid part of the day, like get into an air conditioned building. And yeah. you know, and we've got those throughout the community, whether it be a, a, a library, a shopping center, a movie theater, there are air conditioned places you can go in the middle of the day. And if you can't get there, another trick is to just take a cold shower uh, during the day. And especially for those you know folks who live in homes without air conditioning, a cool shower or bath, that'll help too. Yeah, and speaking of the people without air conditioning, I know you mentioned going to libraries, going to public places. Can they also go to Houston Health Department multi-service centers? Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? We've got 11 of them across the community, so you shouldn't be too terribly far from any one of them. And to find out where the one closest to you is, it's easy. It's just call 311. You give the operator your address. They'll tell you which one is closest. And they're open during the hottest parts of the day from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., regular business hours. And that's when you need to get inside and give your body a break. And um, if all goes well, then maybe you can get back at it again in the evening. Yeah, that's great information, calling 311 to get that information specifically to the neighborhood that you're in. Dr. David Purse, that was great information. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Stay cool, everybody. Thanks, Haley.